morning, everyone. I greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Today is the sixth Sunday after Epiphany, and next Sunday will be the conclusion of the season of Epiphany, a day called Transfiguration Sunday. And that leads us right to Ash Wednesday and then the beginning of Lent. But today we're still in the season of light and really talking about and thinking about Jesus' early ministry. Of course, we are also thinking about the Super Bowl. Um, I see that many of you are appropriately clad, and I will tell you, as I told um, Eric a couple of minutes ago, um, I had a colleague once who preached a sermon called Preaching on Super Bowl Sunday, and, and about what it is that we worship. So um, <laughs> with, with all of those thoughts in our mind, um, let's join Greg now in the call to worship. From the midst of our real lives, with their very real problems, as persons who love imperfectly and are loved imperfectly, as persons who never fully live up to their high calling in Jesus Christ. Let us worship with hearts open to the love of God, with hands outstretched to one another, and with whole selves willing to accept the cost and joy of being Christ's disciples. Please join in the hymn of praise, My Shepherd, You Supply My Need, number 88 in your hymn.
Okay, we now come to the time for announcements and news about what's going on in the church. Please read the inserts in your bulletin. Um, mention a couple things or a couple chances to donate to worthy causes. The um, UCC is running a fundraiser for the earthquakes in Turkey and Syria. The Women's Fellowship is also, um, okay, we'll, we'll mention. Uh, Good morning. As Greg said, the Women's Fellowship is sponsoring the health kits again this year. And a lot of people have asked, well, what does that mean? In the past, we've asked people to bring in different items and then we put them together into a kit. And we found that we we're getting lots of one item and not enough of another item. So a few years ago, we started asking you to donate money. And we will go shopping and buy the things that go in this bag, which is a hand towel, a face cloth, a special comb because it has to have a wide tooth in case they do go overseas and the hair sometimes is thicker than or more curly than ours soap um band-aids a nail clipper and then they all go in this type of bag and then we put them together and we ship them out they go to church world service and then they will distribute them and today there seems to be a bigger need than ever with the um earthquakes overseas, the, the flooding and things in California. One year, some of these bags even came back to Maine up in Rooster County when we had a big flood a number of years ago. So if anybody would like to donate, if you want to do a whole kit yourself, then see me after church and I can show you this and show you exactly what it needs. If not, if you would like to donate, Church World Service says that this is worth $15. We have found that your $15 will go a little bit further and maybe buy one and a half kits instead of, because we have found some different places that we can buy these things at a, a really decent price. So if you make out a check, make it, make, make it payable to Women's Fellowship and even give it to myself or to Allison. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have a um, couple things, just procedural things. Um, next Sunday, we're gonna go back to passing the collection plate. Um, we just, not, not this Sunday, we're still keeping it up here. If we can remember how to do it, you know, we're gonna, <laughs> just another step, trying to get fairly safe and just um, try to get back to our old procedures. And in the same note, a reminder that we are taking signups for coffee hour, if, if you wanna bring for coffee hour like we did in the past. Um, sign up sheet or see Merlene if you have questions on that. And we'll, we'll still do a hybrid coffee hour. We'll still have some of the grab and go snacks, which are actually popular with, with some folks. So, but some of both, so if you, please feel free to sign up and help us get coffee hour back to normal. Okay, are there other announcements? I have my favorite shirt on about um, not cooking. And so <laughs> I wanted to say a special thank you to all of you because of this um, chili chowder cornbread that we've had. It's been wonderful. So would you raise your hand if you brought in any chili? Keep your hands up. If you brought in chowder, keep your hands up now. Stay up. If you bought chili and chowder, you should have two hands up by now. If you brought cornbread, put your hands up. If you participated in any way in helping us do all of this, put your hands up. If it was your idea to have this, <laughs> raise your hand. So it takes a church to do all of this, and we have many people here that have helped. So it's a special, special thank you. And uh, the food is all ready for you. You pick it up after church if you want then or a little later, it's fine. Thank you again. From the Karen Connection. Anyone else?
and let's join together in our prayer of invocation. Gracious God, in whose presence we gather, you promise us grace and pardon when we acknowledge our weakness and shortcomings. We have ignored the cries of the hungry and the hurting. We have questioned your guidance and not responded to our sisters and brothers by seeing you, O oh God, in their eyes. Forgive us, God, and help us meet you face to face. Refresh us with your love and help us trust you who formed us and know us best through Jesus Christ who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I think Mary Lou has our moment for all ages. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Sierra. Hi, Sawyer and Amelia. Um, today in Sunday School, we're going to learn about making, we're going to talk about making choices. And I thought I'd bring back the um, logo that we have for this unit, New World, New Day. And I want you to imagine the people that are standing here being faced with choices. Now, I don't mean choices about you know, who's going to win the Super Bowl? Where am I going to uh, go for lunch? What am I going to order? The choices like that um, are uh, a different type of choice. I want to think about the choices that we make in our daily living. Like, are we going to talk to the new kid in school? Are we going to help out at home? Are we going to um, invite others to Sunday school? And I think the, the guiding thing that we have to remember is always choose the path of love. And we learn about that from uh, the ministry of Jesus, which we're studying in church and in Sunday school during the season of, of Epiphany, and by following Jesus's example. Um, there used to be, or maybe there still is, um, a wristband that you can buy and wear that has WWJD, what would Jesus do? And that, I think, for some people is a good thing to think when you're faced with a choice. You know, what would Jesus do? Is, you know, am I going to do that or am I going to do something else? Um, so uh, we always want to keep that in mind. And another scripture that may be talked about today is uh, choices from the Hebrews when they were struggling in Egypt and then when they were on their way to the promised land they had were confronted with a lot of different choices particularly because they lived with people that um, had other religions and other gods and so that's uh, one reason why Moses and God got together and cooked up the Ten Commandments another guide for making choices um, so we have that and we also have what would Jesus do um, so that's a guide for our choice-making situations. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for loving me. Help us to make good choices. Thank you, God, for loving everyone. Amen. I'm going to stay for the song and then go. <clears throat> All right, I want to introduce this wonderful choir that not only learns Swahili today, but also is doing some hand motions in addition. <laughs> Maybe the choir won't do the hand motions as much. Um, but during the refrain, we have some things to do for you guys. The refrain is, 
Come, come. Come, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And then it repeats. And so what you're doing is come, come. Come, Holy Spirit, come. And then you're um, clapping eight times. Want to demonstrate, Bill? Last week, David preached on a portion of the Sermon on the Mount, talking about salt in his sermon. There was a segment, and the segments in Scripture are called pericopes, which that, that just means that it's a story complete in itself. Um, and that, that segment that he used last week followed the Beatitudes, the, the blessed are the poor in spirit, that I think he had preached on yet the week before. Now, all of that is to say that the lectionary has been assigning us pieces of the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is probably the most important of the sermons that Jesus gave early in his ministry, setting out some of the major theological teachings which he shared with 
both his disciples and the followers who gathered with him on a hillside right above the Sea of Galilee. And today we'll continue with the next five verses of the sermon. Now, the full lectionary passage, what the lectionary has prescribed for today, would have taken us yet another 10 verses further. But this passage, Matthew 5, 21 to 26, is so loaded for, with meaning for us in, in our world today that I think I'll keep us right here in these five verses. So Greg, if you'd read for us. The reading is from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 5, verses 21 through 26. The words of Jesus. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you are angry with a brother or sister, you'll be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you'll be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you'll be liable to the hell of fire. So when you are offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother or sister, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are on the way to court with him, or your accuser may hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you'll be thrown into prison. Truly, I tell you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. So ends the reading. The month of February is honored in many places as Black History Month, a time to consider the story of African Americans as they've experienced life and loss through the history of our nation. It's a grim history, and it's important that we study it. In June of 2009, the US Senate finally passed a resolution apologizing to African Americans for the wrongs of slavery. Earlier, the House of Representatives had passed their own resolution. Several states have passed similar resolutions, but the House resolution was the first time that a branch of the federal government did so. The resolution acknowledges the fundamental injustice, cruelty, brutality, and inhumanity of slavery and also the Jim Crow laws, and apologizes to African Americans on behalf of the people of the United States for the wrongs committed against them and their ancestors who suffered under slavery in the Jim Crow. Jim Crow laws were state and local laws enacted mostly in the US Southern and border states between the 1870s and 1965 that denied African Americans the right to vote and other civil liberties, as well as legally segregating them from whites. It was an apology that was long overdue, and it's a struggle which continues today with the treatment of people like Tyree Nichols and George Floyd. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. In all human relationships, whether as massive as a country apologizing to an oppressed portion of its population, or as personal as two friends needing to repair a misunderstanding, there is no more important or powerful need than forgiveness. And forgiveness can only be achieved through saying sorry. One of my favorite theologians is Frederick Buechner, who died last year or the year before, a great writer and teacher and preacher. I, I look to him for his analysis of forgiveness and apology. He wrote, to forgive somebody is to say one way or another, you have done something unspeakable, and by all rights, I should call it quits between us. Both my pride and my principles demand no less. 
However, although I make no guarantees that I will be able to forget what you've done, and though we both carry the scars for life, I refuse to let it stand between us. I still want you for my friend. To accept forgiveness means to admit that you've done something unspeakable that needs to be forgiven, and thus both parties must swallow the same thing, their pride. When someone you have wronged forgives you, you're spared the dull and self-diminishing throb of a guilty conscience. When you forgive somebody who has wronged you, you're spared the dismal corrosion of bitterness and wounded pride. For both parties, forgiveness means the freedom again to be at peace inside their own skins and to be glad in each other's presence. To apologize is for many one of the hardest acts of relationship to ever approach, much less accomplish. It means that we must acknowledge within our own skins that we have done or said something that's not right. It may mean that we need to reckon with hurt that we may have caused. It may necessitate our coming to terms with an error that we've made. And we don't like to do that. Our culture teaches us that we're okay all of the time. We're not taught to gracefully say that we are in the wrong, that our opinion or our position is anything less than correct. Our egos insist that we are in the right, that what we have done is right. We feel diminished and embarrassed when we must acknowledge that we were wrong, mistaken, or hurtful. We have so much to gain from saying sorry, and yet we feel that we have so much to lose. In the Sermon on the Mount, the Apostle Matthew reports that Jesus tackled this issue. Jesus realized the importance of restoring relationships and put that restoration ahead even of the act of worship. In fact, preached that before one made an offering to God, one must first make sure that all was right with one's brothers and sisters. The words that Matthew remembers Jesus saying are, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, leave your gift here before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother and sister, and then come and offer your gift. Be reconciled. To find full reconciliation is not to say a quick, oops, sorry about that, but instead to come back to a right relationship, to regain the friendship or family relationship, to recover the love that's been lost. One needs a deeper confession of, of fault. Commentator William Bradley, Barclay, sorry, William Barclay, felt that this was a piece of the most practical advice that Jesus ever gave to us. He wrote, again and again, it is the experience of life that if a quarrel or a difference or a dispute is not healed immediately, it can go on breeding worse and worse trouble as time goes on. Bitterness breeds bitterness. It has often happened that a quarrel between two people has descended to their families and has been inherited by future generations and has in the end succeeded in splitting a church or a society or a town or a nation in two. If at the very beginning, one of the parties had had the grace to apologize or to admit fault, a very grievous situation need never have arisen. If ever we're at variance with someone else, we must get the situation put right straight away. It may mean that we must be humble enough to confess that we were wrong and to make apology. It may mean that even if we were in the right, we have to take the first step towards healing the breach. 
When personal relations go wrong, in nine out of 10 cases, immediate action will mend them. But if that immediate action is not taken, they will continue to deteriorate and the bitterness will spread in an ever widening circle. Jesus knew this and taught it on the hillside to those who chose to follow him. It's no action, no accident, that a major concept in the Lord's Prayer is about forgiveness, ours and God's. Our relationships are so precious, family relationships, friendships, those between colleagues, those between neighbors, those between countries and peoples. Now, this is not just Black History Month. February is full of important days. Today is Super Bowl Sunday. It is also Lincoln's birthday. Now, I personally claim tomorrow. I'm willing to admit that I will turn 70 tomorrow at 6 a.m. Tuesday is Valentine's Day. Let's think about Valentine's Day for just a minute. Let's remember the religious call of that day. St. Valentine was a priest who was martyred in third century Rome for helping young couples to be married against the edict of Emperor Claudius. He was a person who valued human relationships and compassion. He valued the love of one person for another. In his honor, May we use Valentine's Day this year to repair any broken relationships we might have. Let's take a day to say sorry. Amen. Let's join in our next hymn, which is God of Life, number 242.
as Greg comes for the microphone, um, this is the time for sharing joys and concerns. Um, I already have that we keep the people of Turkey and Syria in our prayers um, as, as they are in such, such trouble. I heard the number um, this morning has risen to 28,000 dead. Um, so it's just, it's beyond all belief. Um, but what joys and concerns do we have? Yes. Regarding that, if um, if you want to give to uh, a UCC for this um, for this collection, you could put it in the plate, and long as it's um, identified, I'll I'll mail them out in a package. Okay, great. Okay. If you notice in the um, green sheet that you have on this one, um, we've just heard how devastating uh, the earthquakes have been in Turkey and Syria. And the UCC, I always called it like a mother church, the main, the main center of a conference, is it? Our denomination, yes. Yes. And uh, they have a special fund that's an international emergency fund. And it's more special than that, where they're setting aside monies for Turkey and Syria. So you can either donate through our church to that, or you can just take a check and mail it yourself. And um, you can mail it to um, the, uh, let's say, the United Church of Christ. And then the address is in the screen sheet, PO Box 71957. Cleveland, Ohio, 44194. That's the mailing address. On the check, you would write the check payable to the United Church of Christ. And then in the memo line of the church, you would put down Turkey and Syria in there. And you know that your funds are going directly there. I know it's hard. The thing that came to me in, in putting this in on behalf of the mission board is that last week I, I said to myself, well, where do I donate so that I know the money is going right there? And then it dawned on me that, um, the, that the United Church of Christ does have different funds and it has this specific one. So this is a good choice if you're going to choose something to donate to help those people. In doing it, you are saving people's lives and rebuilding their homes. Thank you. You know, I, I'll just emphasize that one more. Um, I, I've been to Turkey and I've met with our mission partners there in Turkey. And we have people on the ground, missionaries from the United Church of Christ who are already in place. Many of them work in Ankara at, um, with something called the Development Foundation of Turkey. Um, but we have also teachers in three different schools uh, across Turkey that are called the American schools in Turkey that historically were founded by some of the, the previous denominations that built into the United Church of Christ. But um, we have been a presence in Turkey for a long time. And so what that means is that we have personnel already there. We don't have to pay for personnel to go overseas to help and to share these funds. Anything that you give to the United Church of Christ, you can know that 99% or better goes directly to the people who are in need. And I, I think that there are very few charities, very few ways of um, donating around the world. We also work through something called Church World Service. And you'll hear us talk about Church World Service when. Um, we talk about uh, both the blanket offering and, and also when we talk about one great hour of sharing, which comes a little bit later during Lent. But um, y you can do so much good by, by donating through um, the UCC because our people are right there on the ground. They know the people they're working with. Um, it's, it's just, as you were saying, it's a great route to, to make a donation. Do we have other joys and concerns? Sally already announced that tomorrow is her birthday, which I was going to do anyway, because I think we should sing to her. <laughs> Mia. 
ask, are there other February birthdays here? Do we have anybody else who's a, a February birthday? Hey, we've got a couple of the, oh, what day do you, Merlene? Hey, and Susan, how? Yeah, uh, no, it's Okay, all right. Well, we'll include, we'll include February, we'll include February birthdays in the prayer house now. Also the 13th, that's right, he is. Well, we would, would you tell him that we wish him a very happy birthday? Okay, yes. Okay, well, please pass on our greetings and we'll try and greet her with a, a happy birthday when we get. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Absolutely. Wow. You know, at a time when there seems to be so much trouble and heartache in the world, it's, it's moments and stories like that, that that really say God is still speaking and God is still at work in the world. I mean, that is, what a beautiful gift. Wow, that's, a, that's amazing. Other joys and good, yes. I'll start with Will. Yeah, I'd like to share a joy. Uh, a week ago Friday, I was at the gym, and someone asked me a off-the-cuff political question, which turned into a discussion, which turned into a religious discussion. And within three or four minutes, there were four people all joining that discussion. And we were talking about the lack of God in our lives, the lack of God on television, the lack of God every place. And it was just a joy to be talking with fellow Christians that I had not met, uh, uh, the other two people, one I was friends with, but the other two people just joined our conversation. And we agreed that by speaking out more and having conversations like that more, we can more bring God back into our lives. So that was a real joy to me. I just wanted to share a quote by Maya Angelou that I read yesterday, and I thought it was very good, and you can interpret this any way you want, but do the best you can until you know better. Once you know better, do better. Well done. So I, I want to offer another joy, and this is another installment of Your Standish Scouts. <laughs> Um, so yesterday, the Standish, uh, one of the Standish troops, along with a bunch of Standish Cub Scouts, uh, participated in what they call the Klondike Derby, in which case we made a dog sled and we had to pull it through a bunch of different challenges uh, in the woods, through a lot of snow. Um, without dogs, the, the sled got pulled by scouts. So along the way, we had a particular scout who was very uh, unfamiliar with physical activity out in the woods, especially in deep snow, and was having quite the hard time keeping up. And in one of the particular challenges, they are pulling the sled in the sled race, and they're going out into the woods and through a trail that's marked. And for a while, the leaders don't have sight on them. And all throughout the time, you know, us leaders have been kind of concerned about this particular scout and making sure that you know, he's able to keep up and whatnot. And we were really concerned when we couldn't see them in the woods. And we're waiting and we're waiting. And then all of a sudden we see them come out of the woods. The scouts are going full steam. And that one scout that could not keep up, he was in the sled and the rest of the scouts were pulling him. Oh, that's great. And he just had the biggest smile on his face. 
And it was a smile of joy and somewhat concern as they got kind of close to the cliff, and you know. But uh, <laughs> they made it, and they actually uh, placed in the top three of all the troops that were there, and they were very proud of it. And it just goes to show the lessons that youth teach us if we're Absolutely. willing to pay attention. Well, I, I hope we wouldn't call him dropping the dog. <laughs> lovely to have so many joys thinking of all that we've shared let's turn our hearts and minds toward God in prayer gracious and loving God we give you thanks and praise as we think about all those that we love and all those who love us sometimes we don't even know that we are loved or feel unloved but then you break into our lives and by your care expressed through those around us we know that we are precious and chosen special and loved beyond all imagining for we are never outside of your love and we're blessed to be able to reflect that love to others near and far when we're aware of a person who's in need of the warmth of relationship in need of a friendly word touch us and send us out to be your hands and heart god of compromise and reconciliation Restore all those relationships which have been broken by distrust, dishonesty, greed, selfishness, or separation. Open our hearts to one another. Guide us in our words and actions. Heal those who've been hurt intentionally or unintentionally. Create understanding where it's been blocked. Watch over all those who need your help to reconnect and challenge us to express our sorrow and remorse for hurt given or received. Lord of all, we care, and in our caring we share joys and concerns. Our hearts are broken as we listen to the reports from Syria and Turkey in the wake of the devastation caused by this week's earthquake. Challenge the global community to be generous in sending aid. Comfort those who've lost loved ones or homes. Guard those who even now are working to save lives in the cold of winter. Keep watch over all who might be ill or injured today. We think not only of the people of Syria and Turkey, but we also think of the people of Ukraine. We give thanks for the fact that even in the midst of their struggle, they have thought to send aid workers to Turkey. We pray for traveling mercies for all those who are on the road or in the air. Bless David and Kelly as they travel and bring them back to us safely. We pray for all those listed in the bulletin this morning, those in need of healing and those who are serving our country. In spirit of hope and love, oh, we have shared joy today. We think of February birthdays. We think of that man who gave $30 million anonymously. We think of religious discussions in secular places. We think of Maya Angelou and others who we read and who send us in new directions and give us new perspective. And we think about Boy Scouts helping one another. For all these things, we give you thanks and praise in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Freely you have received, freely give. Well, we're not yet passing the offering plate, although it seems we will be doing that next week. It's here on the table waiting for our gifts. And let's listen to Katie as she plays our offertory music.
let's join in our prayer of dedication. Loving God, may our sense of belonging within a community of faith nurture the longing to be your faithful servants. Teach us to build a partnership with your spirit that advances the ways of generosity and grace. Accept our giving and receive our gifts. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And our final hymn will be number 85, Jesus Savior, Lord, to thee I fly. Let us go out from this time together with God's blessing for the world. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. amen.